What is AWS CloudFormation? I would define CloudFormation as automation and elasticity realize. See, Amazon Web Services brought us the ability to create these things called AMIs. This is essentially where you build your perfect web server or database server or whatever kind of server you're looking for and then freeze it in an AMI image so that you can replicate it into multiple uh, instances and you can scale it using a feature called auto scaling on the fly. Now, you're going to have to combine that with some some techniques of bootstrapping, which aren't the easiest things, but you can you can master it to have your infrastructure scale. Well, CloudFormation takes that to a whole nother level. Instead of scaling individual servers, you can begin scaling entire infrastructure. As a matter of fact, Amazon calls this infrastructure as code. Here's why. CloudFormation works with what's called JSON, that's JavaScript object notation, template files. All these really are is big old text file that define exactly what Amazon Web Services features you want. So take a look. I'm sitting in Amazon Web Services right now at the management console. I'm going to go into the cloud formation, and you can see that I don't have, at least in North California, any uh, stacks or cloud formation templates that are there. So I'm going to sit, hit create a new stack, and you see I've got these templates. It does the drop down. I've got Joomla, I've got WordPress, I've got all kinds of different things that I can do. Now, initially, it's like, well, these are just kind of these big old things, right? You pick them, and they just kind of work. Well, if you go to Google, let me uh, let me actually go there right now and type in AWS cloud formation templates and shoot over here to what Amazon Web Services has they will actually give you all of the templates that they use when you are choosing that little drop down right here so for instance I saw a WordPress blog let's scroll down a little bit and well here I'll just make it easy and do WordPress if I could spell it there we go. WordPress, single instance with relational database is what that looks like. So I'm going to hit, instead of launch stack, which takes me straight into Amazon Web Services console, I'm going to click on this, which defines the JSON template. Now you can see right up here, it's, it, it really is just a straight up text file. And Amazon defines these. They spell out the syntax you need to use for them. Initially, it says, OK, here's the parameters. Here's what you need to collect from the user if they do this. Because if you say, well, I want a WordPress blog, we'll call it Jeremy's uh, Thing, Jeremy's blog. I'll click on continue, and it's going to start asking, okay, what are the, what's the password? What kind of instance? I acknowledge this. So all of these are answering questions that it's it's asking. It says I need to fill all of these things in as you're going through this. So all this is is a big old template, and then underneath here it says, okay, well after you've asked all the questions, I'm going to define, for instance, the database class. This is a server that's going to launch uh, an individual database for this. I'm going to create a database in there, a username and a password for that database. So it's, it's essentially a big old text file that can automate multiple resources. See, when you've got AMIs and you use auto scaling, that's great because it creates virtual machines, but cloud formation creates an entire infrastructure. So envision this. Maybe your company starts getting so template. Maybe you run a uh, cloud services hosting company based off of AWS, built on AWS, and your customers come to you and you say, for $59.99.99 a month, I'm going to sign you up with you know five database servers. You're going to have six web servers, you're going to have, you know, you, you kind of define all these packages. Oh, that's too much. Okay, for $49.99 a month, I've got two databases. So yeah, you, you see what I mean? So you start creating all these cloud formation templates that make it easy for you when you get customer X that signs up for package B, you just come in and launch the package B template, which you've defined, uh, and it automatically builds all the AWS resources that you need for that customer. Awesome. Now, Sometimes getting into the JSON gets a little bit hairy uh, because you don't usually want to just start this from scratch. You'll start building what people have already done. But Amazon says, you know what? We're going to make it a little easier. We're going to create something called Cloud Former. What's that? Well, I can come in here. You might have saw it at the, at the very beginning when I before I even start in here. It says, do you want to create a template from your existing resources? Launch Cloud Former. Okay, so here's what this does. It allows me to go in and choose resources that I already have running. See what I mean? So instead of going through and typing all this text of exactly what I need, oh, syntax error, oh, I forgot a semicolon, you know, all those kind of things. You can go in, you can say, well, actually, I want to include, and it comes up and says, well, I see you've got five elastic load balancers. What would you like to include here? I'd say, well, well, that one and that one. And so you go through uh, this little GUI, essentially, and build your own little templates on a point-and-click interface. So then it says, okay, now I'm able to replicate an infrastructure that you've already had in place. You build it from an existing infrastructure, and it generates the JSON template files for you.
Can I add two more things that I love about CloudFormation? One is AWS handles all the dependencies for you. What does that mean? It means that when you're creating these files, you can imagine what a hassle it would be if you have to say, okay, well, before I can put in the configuration for the elastic load balancer, we'll say I have to create the machines first that are going to be in there, and oh, no, the order's wrong and all that. No, 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 no. Amazon Web Services looks at the template file and parses it in the order that's right. So even if your template file is totally out of order, you put your machines in before the load balancers and elastic IPs before the machines and all, all that kind of stuff, it's going to go and figure out the right order for you. And, and here's number two, when it's all said and done, you can delete the, te the cloud formation template and it deletes all the associated resources. Oh my goodness, that's so valuable. Uh, Amazon Web Services is awesome in that it's a pay-as-you-go infrastructure, but they charge for everything. You know this if you've been in AWS for any amount of time. Every bit of bandwidth, every s byte of hard drive space, every you know file you put in an S3 bucket, I mean, everything has some little microscopic uh, billing associated with it. And as your infrastructure grows and grows and grows, you may forget what you even have out there. Well, the beauty of creating these cloud formation templates is you might create 100 resources resources uh, when you deploy it, but when you delete the template, it goes and finds all those hundred resources and wipes them out so you don't have these lingering kind of severed <laughs> resources that are just costing you money every single month. So that's why I have decided to nominate CloudFormation as cool feature of the year. <laughs> With that being said, if you're looking for more AWS, we have tons of it, lots of series resources created over at cbtnuggets.com. My name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.